Northern Essos is not its own separate region. Instead of just making smaller videos on all these areas that don't have a lot of information written about it, I thought it would be a better idea to make one map detailing and call it Northern Essos. All of the extra world building and lore we get is in the perspective of the people from Westeros, so a lot of Essos is left a mystery. We get to know about some areas because some of the main POV characters have been traveling throughout the series like Daenerys. We also know about the cities near the western coast because of how close they are to Westeros. But further east and the northern coast will probably always be left shrouded in mystery. I've talked about the free cities like Braavos and Lorath in my Valyrian Freehold map detailing, so I won't bother going over that again. <laughs> Don't be afraid. He's announcing our arrival. I'm not afraid. A peninsula I don't think I've talked much about is the Axe. It's obviously named after its shape. This is supposedly where the Andals originate from. They would eventually migrate to a larger region they would name Andalos. If you don't know who the Andals are, they're the race of people that invaded Westeros after the First Men and now make up a large population of the continent. They also brought the Faith of the Seven with them and converted the majority of the kingdoms. They only sailed away from Andalos because of the Valyrian's conquest. Some of the Andals went back to the Axe instead of crossing the narrow sea to Westeros. As of right now, it's a contested piece of land with no true ruler. There used to be a kingdom called Sarnar that ruled over the grasslands, but after the Doom of Valyria, the Dothraki ravaged through the entire kingdom. They destroyed all the cities except for Sath. They are the last of the Sarnari people, and only survived because they had support from others. I go over this in detail in my Dothraki Sea map detailing. The Dothraki would leave these cities in complete ruin, and then rename the city an insulting term in their own language. A Sarnari city on the northern coast called Saris was ruined and then renamed Vazgardak, which means city of filth in Dothraki. The very small kingdom of Ombar avoided Dothraki to the south from raiding them by the king offering grains, gems, and girls as a tribute every year in hopes they would just ride past their kingdom. As terrifying as the Dothraki are, they fear a ruined settlement they call Vaislasi in the kingdom of Efekravan. Vaislasi is Dothraki for the city of ghosts. They wouldn't even come close to the kingdom because of who used to inhabit these forests. Ifekrovan is Dothraki for Woodswalkers. Woodswalkers are described very similarly to the Children of the Forest. So it's possible they lived here in Essos. A Westerosi adventurer did visit this kingdom but only saw carved trees, haunted grottoes, and strange silences. The Children of the Forest are known to carve faces into weirwood trees as part of their rituals. The Woodswalkers have completely disappeared. It's believed they were either killed off or just have moved somewhere safer. Everyone thought the children of the forest in Westeros went extinct after the Andal invasion, but they just know how to stay out of sight. The Woodswalkers are likely doing the same. There is a race of people in northern Essos that live around here, but they've never seen one of these Woodswalkers. Iben is an island country, but the Ebenese have been populating some of the forested area where the Woodswalkers once roamed. They say they haven't seen any, but leave offerings of water, leaf, or stone at night so the Woodswalkers can bless their homes. Being islanders, the Ebenese are big on fishing and built a fishing village on the northern coast. They named it Ibish, and over time it developed into a port with a gate made out of whalebone. Without the woodswalkers to fear, the Dothraki have completely destroyed this place and renamed it Vos Arasak, meaning the city of cowards. It got this name because of instead of fighting the Dothraki, the Ebenese sailed back to their largest island, Ebe. Like I said, Ebe is the largest island in Iben, but also the second largest island in this world. Great Morak being the first, way down in southern Essos. It's a mountainous and heavy forested island. The Ebenese are pretty much the dwarves in other fantasies like Lord of the Rings. Five and a half feet is their max height, and they're large with broad shoulders and a broad chest. They're extremely hairy and have short legs with larger arms. Their strong and stout bodies make them good fighters. They're not welcoming of outsiders. People not from Iben are only allowed in their main port city of this country called Port of Iben at the south coast of the island. To go anywhere else, you would need to be accompanied by an Ebenese host. This makes more sense when you find out that they can't really mate with other races. Their children turn out as stillborn or with deformities. This led people to look at the Ebenese as a completely different species outside of other humans. The people who live deeper into the mountains and forests of Ebe are even more secluded. They don't live in villages or towns. Instead, they choose to live alone, either in caves or underground. There is another city on the northern coast called Ebe Nor. There's a smaller island called Far Ebe. It's even bleaker than Eeb, which is described as grey and depressing, so this place must really suck. Eebsar is the only named city here. 
This was once a place where the worst exiled Ebony's criminals were sent to live the rest of their lives. The criminals were first mutilated to the point where they could never leave. This form of punishment ended after the fall of the former rulers called the God Kings of Eve. Now Eben is ruled by a group called the Shadow Council, who are elected by the country's most influential people. The other smaller islands part of Eben haven't even been named, let alone have lore on it. The people of Eben are known to be whalers. Their culture revolves heavily around everything whales. There are some pretty interesting beasts found around here. Dragon bones can be found, which means they once lived here. Mammoths still roam around, and there are rumors of unicorns at the top of the mountains. Giants may have possibly also lived here. After the Dothraki burned and ruined the port city Ibesh on mainland Essos, the Ibanese built new Ibesh at the very tip of Essos. The Ibanese may be the shortest race, but just east of the kingdom of Ifekrovan live the tallest. At the northernmost region of the Bone Mountains live giants twice the size of the giants from Westeros. They were called the Jogwin and they lived in the realm of the Jogwin. They were all killed off a thousand years ago by a short group of people called the Jagos Nahai. The Jagos Nahai lived similarly to the Dothraki, with them going around constantly raiding others without having a home of their own. They ride around on their zebra looking animals on the plains of the Jagos Nahai. The Howling Hills, just between the realm of the Jagwin and the plains of the Jagos Nahai, are where the two races had their last battle, and where the last of these massive giants were killed. It was called a battle in the Howling Hills. The size of the Jagwin isn't just some myth written within this story. Their bones can still be found throughout the Bone Mountains. North of the Howling Hills is an unnamed forested peninsula, and just east of here is a bay of water called Leviathan Sound. Leviathans are just massive whales in this story. The Ebenese sail throughout the Shivering Sea when they go whaling, but also come to Leviathan Sound to hunt these huge whales since they come here to breed. The Shivering Sea is so vast that sailors can get away with creating some wild myths. There are supposedly blue mists that can freeze ships and drown spirits that pull people into the freezing waters at night. A place called Cannibal Bay where the water behind your ship freezes, trapping you forever. The others trapped in Cannibal Bay survive by eating the newly trapped people. There are stories about evil mermaids, and the most famous stories are about the ice dragons. Back on northern Essos is the last port off the Shivering Sea, a city called Nefer. It's the only city within the small kingdom of Nagai. Nefer is perpetually shrouded in fog. At first glance, it seems like a small town, but 90% of the city is underground. It's been referred to as a secret city because of this. But what this place is most known for are some of the citizens being necromancers and torturers. So not the best reputation and definitely not an ideal spot to visit. There's only one city in the entire kingdom of Nagai because of raids from the Jagos Nahai. Unfortunately for this kingdom, they're right at the border of the plains of the Jagos Nahai, so they have to repeatedly deal with them. Every other city must have been sacked and left in ruin. It makes sense that Nefer would be mostly underground since their zebra riding attackers would have a harder time getting to them. North of here, into the Shivering Sea, are the Thousand Islands, although the name is an exaggeration. Ebenese map makers claim there are less than 300 islands. Some believe this place to be the last remnants of a drowned kingdom that was submerged by the rising sea long ago. Very few have ever sailed here, however, out of fear of the inhabitants. The few islanders found here are supposedly hostile towards sailors. It's believed that they sacrifice anyone who lands on their islands to their foreign gods. They may be the only islanders who are deathly afraid of water. They are hairless with a greenish skin tone. The females filed their teeth into sharp points, so they aren't the prettiest to look at. Why so blue, green man? Is it because you're powerless to help your friend, or because you're just plain ugly? The fish here look deformed and have a weird taste to them. The only Westerosi sailor brave enough to sail this far east turned back after the Thousand Islands. Whatever is east of these waters is a mystery. Things get weirder and weirder the further east you travel, so it's probably a good decision to turn back. Northern Essos ends with Masovi. It's a cold and dark forested chunk of land. Shape changers and demon hunters are known to make their home here. We haven't seen any of these shape changers or demon hunters in the show or books. I don't even know what a demon would be in this series. A shape changer could be just another name for a warg. Georgian Reed does tell Bran that fearful people will call him a skin changer when they learn of his powers. Some septons in Westeros claim that the world ends east of Masovi, giving way to a realm of mists, then a realm of darkness, and finally a realm of storm and chaos, where sea and sky become one. But what do they know? With this video, I think I've detailed the entire map. Something I never planned on doing, but with everyone I made, more requests on different regions kept coming up in the comments. So I appreciate everyone who watched any of these videos, and thanks for watching this one.